Hello everybody, this is Gabi and this is week two of our 2020 mystery weave along. And I'm sorry I'm a little bit late here. Uh, this stay at home time is, is actually uh, can, can turn into quite busy times, at least on my end. Um, so, um, but I'll try to catch up and this is week two. I also have to talk a little bit faster because uh, once more we have a severe thunderstorm uh, coming through. So let's get started right away with week two of our mystery weave along. And uh, before we dive into this week's assignments, I would like to do a quick or short review of week one. Uh, I'm actually surprised how many people are participating. I think this is absolutely awesome. Uh, we have people on Facebook, uh, we have people on Ravelry, um, we even have two people that attend through email only. So which is absolutely, you know, um, if you want to do it, come find me no matter how and uh, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, quick review from week one. Uh, when I saw Stephanie's picture from last week, this is like this woman can read my mind. Uh, this picture is just perfectly laid out with the, with the squares and the hexagons, with the extra ones, everything labeled perfectly. So when I saw this picture, I was like, ah, this woman is reading my mind. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for having such an engineering approach to displaying your weekly weavings. The next one is um, that I thought was uh, very nice to or one thing that I would like to show you is uh, Emily and I hope I pronounce your name properly a lot of people started asking this is like uh, can we use patterns and yeah you can use patterns I'm not ma making that um, a base requirement and I will not show patterns uh, because the focus is on other things here uh, mainly on the mystery but if you want to use patterns you can Emily <clears throat> does a really cool approach. So she is weaving or winding the first three layers uh, in in uh, in one color, and then only weaves the fourth layer in a uh, in a in another color, which gives this perfect. So she does a little bit weaving with colors and playing with colors, but stretching with the, with the basic uh, basic thread that she used for winding. I love the effect. It looks like a candy store. So this is like perfect. I wanted to show you this as an example because, um, you know, if you don't like just plain weave, but you don't want to tackle patterns right now, um, <laughs> you have so many options and this is one of them. Wind in one color and only use a color for the fourth layer. Um, all right. Uh, if you want to get really fancy with patterns, uh, take a look. Uh, I used Tara as an example here and um, Tara is using um, sh So she is using this one as the, the blue is plain, but then she is using uh, This one for a, a pattern for her beige and a cross pattern I'm not sure if you can see this properly. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit um, a cross pattern weaving pattern for um, <clears throat> uh, for her red squares. Um, if you choose to weave patterns, I highly recommend that you pick a pattern that uh, has no direction. For example, here, both well, these patterns are ideal because whether I hold them like this or hold them like this, they still look almost the same. All right, and that will be important for the last week when we put all the pieces together. Anyway, so that's pretty much everything I would like to say about pattern. You can do patterns if you want, but you don't have to. Play with colors and let the colors work and just enjoy the weave along. All right, colors. It's mind boggling the beautiful colors that we have seen in week one. And I have chosen Maureen's color choices here uh, to show a beautiful blend of, of pastel colors and then the contrast is Denise 
uh, with very vibrant colors. And you know, let me just go quickly back to, to um, Maureen here, and then once more, Denise. Everything works. Uh, you know, colors that blend or colors that contrast. It's amazing what we can... Uh, I'm just so much looking forward to seeing the results, you won't believe it. Um, because at this point I can't even imagine everything uh, the way it will work and the way it will look when we are finally done, but uh, it's just absolutely amazing. Another reason why I chose Denise's example, because... <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> She uh, she posts when she posted this picture, uh, she said, "Hey, this is my first time joining. One of the major objectives of this weave along is to um, to overcome the hurdle of of joining. Um, just give it a try, like Denise did, and take a look at her work. This is like it's totally perfect." And it's, it's really no big deal. There are different methods on how you can join. Uh, try out uh, several different methods. Uh, I intentionally don't tell you which joining method to use because I really would like you to explore. That's another objective of this weave along. I want you to go out and look, uh, browse, surf the internet, talk to your friends in the groups. Hey, what are you using? Take a look what I just found. What do you think of this? So it's not kind of, okay, do A, B, C, but okay, here's the theme. Go find something and try it out. And if you don't like it, try something else. But um, the key is that nothing is too difficult. Um, just try it out and see if you like it. So thank you, Denise, for encouraging. And many, many others actually after that came and said, hey, I tried it. It's actually not that bad. We had several people that also said, well, I'm not really happy with my joints. And that's okay, too. Because it's not like you get up in the morning uh, and say, hey, today I go to Tokyo to the Olympics and win the gold medal. It doesn't work that way. And that's not, and that's the same for crafts or for work or for sports or what have you. Um, you know, you have to be determined to try it, try it out, and then practice. And practice will make you better. But also, don't uh, don't throw out things that you uh, you know that are not perfect. And this actually, um, I will have another point on that uh, in a, in a little while. But anyway, keep on trying. Uh, just get started and then keep practicing. All right, and last not least, uh, this is the chuckle of the week. Uh, <clears throat> Carol posted this little super cute bunny and how timely with Easter weekend coming up and said, hey, you know, this square did not want to be a mystery. It wanted to be a bunny. And I got such a laugh out of it. So thank you, Carol, for cheering us all up with your extremely cute little bunny. All right, uh, enough review. Let's take a quick look at our week two. And um, here is one thing that I, I thought that I just started and I would like to finish. Uh, one of the, uh, and I'm start, starting backwards here, I admit that. But you see here the 2020, and there you see November 1967. Um, two things about that. One is, if you are not perfect right now, don't worry. Keep practicing. This, I have shown this actually two years ago when we did our weave and stitch along. Uh, this is my very first piece that I completed in embroidery. And you can see there are like several things that are really totally crooked and not so perfect. But this was in 1967, all right? And not that I'm perfect, this uh, perfect now um, was embroidery, but I think I'm a little bit better than I was in 1967. But that's, please let that be an encouragement for you to um, please keep trying, keep practicing. Don't give up. Don't expect to wake up like 
perfectly. The other thing that I wanted to show you here is my mom embroidered uh, the date on this piece, November 1967. And um, initially I thought, oh, she ruined it. It looks so ugly. I don't want those ugly numbers on my piece. Uh, but you know, <laughs> that many decades later, I so much appreciate it for two reasons. Number one, I know exactly when I made this piece. Number two, I know that my mom cared enough to, to, to take note of that piece. This is, uh, you know, this is a little bit sentimental or a lot sentimental, but this is why I, for this week, um, chose to suggest an option to make one extra weavy with the date or with the year on it. And I have two options here, 2020 in cross stitch and 2020 in back stitch, or you can do anything you want. You can needle felt, you can uh, use an applique, you can uh, make any other embroidery stitches, you can crochet and uh, sew on it, what, whatever. Just any ideas, I hope to see many ideas um, to express 2020. All right, so um, this is backwards with our, uh, so this is optional. You can, you can do this and there are, uh, let me see if I can find this quickly. I put two sample um, alphabets, actually complete alphabets, that work very well on the zoom loom and the hexagon pin loom. Um, they are, or you can find those on Pinterest. Okay, so these are just regular Pinterest and uh, you can find them there. And I just used the two and the zero with the cross stitch and uh, the two and the zero here for uh, on the zoom loom all right um but anyway uh, again you can do whatever what you whatever you want but these are things if you are not sure what you want to do there are two options but i also would like to encourage you to go out and be creative all right let's take a quick look at uh our second week here the goals for this week is uh, weave and assemble the second six squares or hexagons and then we already uh, add the date which is optional we already talked about that also start collecting snippets of yarns about 10 will be plenty and anywhere between one and three inches is fine we will be using them later i show you an example here of the uh, two squares that i assembled um, if the threads are long enough, just leave them there, is my recommendation for later. Uh, but, you know, once you have sewn something together like this, uh, the snippets probably turn out relatively short. And then you can just snip them off and put them into a little Ziploc bag um, and save them. So something like this is, is perfect, is perfect for, for the purpose. So this or a little bit longer is fine. Uh, put them into a little Ziploc bag and save them. About 10 is plenty. Um, they don't have to be just from the project. You can, you know, start collecting snippets from other projects too. No problem. Okay. So just that we have a good variety uh, for a week to come. All right. So uh, let me see. Quick take a look here on what we will be assembling. Uh, we have, I want you to weave for the squares, two in background color, two in uh, color two, and two in color three. For the hexagons, two in background color, three in contrast color one, and one in color two. If you flip the page, turn the page, you see the two schematics. Let's get started with... Let me put the hexagons aside and zoom in a little bit. Here we go. 
So what we will be do is uh, for what we will do for the squares is CC3 background background CC3. Let me see. No. It won't fit. I have to zoom out a little bit. Here we go. All right. And if you hear background thunder, that's because the thunderstorm is moving in. We're trying to get through this anyhow. So CC3, background, background, and CC3. All right. And then we need CC2 and CC2. So this is what you will be making for the squares. All right, again, CC3, background, background, CC3, CC2 and CC2. And you see here that this last one is not attached. And I just want to show you very quickly how I join. Please remember how I join is not how you have to join. It's an option, it's not a must. But I would like to show you in real time how easy the joining actually is. So let's take a look here. So here is our, uh, here's the strip of three squares that we already have. And here's the next square that I want to attach. I always start, because it helps me to think, I always start with putting the weavy down the way it comes off the loom. So this one here is the starting thread and this one here is the, the, the ending tail. Okay, so that's how it comes off the loom. All right, I use the starting thread for sewing, but you can use the, you know, you can use the end tail from the other hexagon, uh, other square, if you want. That's personal preference. You can do whatever you want. I just show you today what I do here with the starting tail, thread it. And I told you I will do this in real time. I'm left-handed. I'm doing it with my right hand so that it's easier for you to see, which means it will be a little bit crooked to watch. I hope it will not be too crooked. All right, let me zoom in a little bit and then show you. All right, the trick with the squares, or it gets tricky, seemingly tricky, because the squares have those scallops, all right? But it's really not that bad. It looks very pretty, by the way, because you have this automatic edging. You don't need to do anything there. But it, when, when it comes to joining, you ask yourself, like, okay, how do I make them fit together? Well, it's actually... If you look closely at those uh, scallops, you see that there are always two turns of threads. One turn, next turn, little gap. One turn, next turn, little gap. And this is what we will be working with. So if you look at those two here, when you slide them together, you see how those scallops actually move together, all right? So this is one scallop gets into the scallop of the opposite side. And the other thing is that this one here on the left has this very tiny little dinky or tiny little scallop. And on the right one, there is nothing right there. So we will try to uh, make use of that. Grab your gear. And then when you have them like this in front of you, Pick them up and just slide them together like this and hold the edges up. And you can see, hopefully, that the edges kind of, you know, here's a scallop and that goes into where there's no scallop on the other side. Here's the scallop, and that front scallop, back scallop. You can probably see it a little bit better if you hold them a little bit off. All right, slide them together like this. <clears throat> and now we'll just get started with sewing. The first stitch I do is I go through that little scallop on the white side. And through the first 
scallop on the back like this, okay? The next one is, there's a new scallop starting in the front and there's one to finish in the back. Can you see this? I'm just bending this a little bit and stitch. Scallop to finish in the front, scallop to start in the back. <clears throat> And that will be the story of your life. Scallop to start in the front, finish in the back, stitch. Finish in the front, start in the back. Start in the front, finish in the back. Finish front, start back stitch, start back, finish, stitch. And you can also just, you know, finish, start, start, finish, finish, start, start, finish. Finish, start, start, finish, finish, start, and then there's one where you do just the last one in the corner. Okay, all right, and now you have an opportunity to check. So this is what it look like, looks like right now. Um, work with medium tension. What you want to achieve is that your sewing looks very similar to the weaving. Okay, I probably worked a little bit too, um, too loosely for this one, but let's take a look. So what I do is I put it down and just stretch it a little bit. You see this? And then you can turn it over and this will because this will be your your right side you work on the on the wrong side and then this will be the right side of your final project in the end actually looks pretty good at least good enough to me so since there's not much thread left i'll just weave in the end so like five or six or seven stitches All right, and then snip it off. This one is probably a little bit too short for my project, so I would probably discard that. But anyway, so this is a real-time uh, sewing two squares together. And I even talked with it, and I did it with my right hand. So with a little bit of practice, you get very fast with this. And here's our piece of week two week 2a and week 2b all right let's do the same thing for our hexagons in hexagon land we have two strips this week Background color, C1, C1. And another background color. You see all those threads here and several people have asked, um, you know, can we just weave in the threads or, um, or, or what? Um, it's personal preference. If you are get irritated by all these threads being around, feel free to weave them in and then you just use a separate thread to sew your pieces together. Um, I personally like to um, use the ends to weave together, uh, to sew together, sorry. Um, 
because then I also have the right colors at hand. I can show you an example with what I mean with this. Let's get this a little bit organized. Um, the same trick is true here. I do the, uh, I take the, the new weavy off the loom, the way it comes off the loom, and then I lay them all out, which keeps them all into the right direction and I have the sewing threads at the right time. And you can see here now, this is like, if I lay it out like this, I have a thread for sewing in the right color. So when you sew together different colors, I highly recommend that you choose one of those colors for the sewing and not a third one because a third one would stick out, all right? Okay, same thing here. I wanna quickly show you how to sew two hexagons together. And there will actually, uh, down the road in coming weeks, there will be two different ways to sew them together. Um, but for now, again, this is how it comes off the loom, how it comes off the loom. Um, sew the thread that's like right there. And then you pick them up the way you have put them down. And then we start sewing. Okay. And with the hexagons, you see here that it, it almost looks like little beads that when you put them together, so hold the, the two rows of beads um, next to each other, and then you just start sewing. So the first one is just to secure the thread, and then you pick up the one in the rear and in the front and pull through. And always always pairs of those little beads and you know don't go you don't need to go in between just just sew those little little dinkies or beads together and you will have one two three four five and again um, Six, going through. Seven. And then in the corner, eight. So there are eight stitches. Uh, one through each of the loops. So the starting one to secure and then one in the ending corner. Again, uh, use medium tension. Okay, and let's take a look if we like. So. Again, put it down and then you can wiggle it a little bit to stretch it out. And you can see here, this is what the wrong side looks like. And then you can turn it over. This is what the right side looks like. I'm doing a close up. This is what the wrong side looks like. And this is what the right side looks like. So the tension is perfect if you have a tension that looks similar to this, the tension of your woven fabric. All right, so that's all there is to it. Um, there's still a lot of thread left, so I'm just leaving this on and see if I can make use of that when, when we put the final piece together. So here we have it. Background color, CC1 and CC1, CC1 CC and background color. And then here we have a piece with two hexagons right here, CC1 and CC2. All right, uh, let me do a final check. I think we got everything for today. Um, if you have any questions, um, please just contact me. I have people contact me through the blog through email, through the, you know, people post on, on the, uh, on the groups, which is awesome. Um, but any, anything goes, there's no need to get frustrated before you get frustrated, um, you know, contact or post, uh, we're here to support each other. Um, this weave along is intended to be fun. It's not a full-time weave along because you still have to take care of yourself, of your families, and maybe you will still have a knitting project or something else going on that you still want to 
pursue at the same time. So um, it's it's not too uh, time consuming. The other thing is that also um, it will allow people, if you have a friend or so, and that friend says, oh, I would like to attend, or I would like to do that too, but I'm not sure if I'm too late. You can start at any time. Because the load is relatively easy, there is still plenty of time to catch up. Uh, and also the materials will stay up there if you don't worry if you don't get done right now because there will be uh, you know you can you can do it anytime you want all right I think we got everything let me just do a quiet final check here um, yeah I think that's we have a frequently asked questions for example you know do we weave in the ends uh, what do I do, uh, you know, um, am I too late or anything like that. We have a frequently asked questions. If I get questions more than twice, I'll write a frequently asked questions and they are on the Texas Garby blog. So you can find them there. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this very chatty um, video for week two. And I'm looking forward to seeing many many pictures and let's chat and uh, just have a really good time together again if you have any questions or concerns or comments please contact me we'll work it out that's it for week two have a great week for those of you who celebrate easter um enjoy carol's bunny one more time and um, i'll see you next week bye bye